support. The maestro, please. First pop analysis of fall, and honestly, it was just a matter of time before we finally got to this artist. Today, we'll be going over Good Luck Babe by Chappelle Roan. Chappelle Roan. Kaylee M. Stutz, better and preferably known as Chappelle Roan, is a pop singer out of Missouri who's recently gotten a lot of fame really quickly. Part of her initial quick rise to fame was mostly thanks to the song. Pink And she has most certainly kept it going with songs such as Background. Good Luck Babe was originally released on April 5th of 2024. It charted a couple weeks later, all the way at number 77. Just like her rise to stardom, though, it continued to rise through the charts, and as of the end of September, it is at number four. Good Luck Babe is meant to be the first single off of her upcoming second album. She herself has said that it's the first song of the next chapter. Besides Chappelle Roan, credits on this track also include Justin Tranter and Dan Nigro. Been quite some time since we first talked about Justin Tranter back when we did Somebody love ooh, ooh, But you can't blame me for trying Obviously he's had time to get a couple of more hits under his belt in terms of pop credits such as I needed to lose you to love me yeah, To love, love yeah. And Oh the misery Everybody wants to be my enemy Dan Nigro is another one we've talked about before, a bit more recently since we did. I got my driver's license last week, just like we always talked about. Similarly, he has also gotten an additional hit under his belt, given it's still with Olivia Rodrigo. Leave me dry like a goddamn vampire. <laughs> Good Luck Babe is released jointly by both Amusement and Island. Form. Good Luck Babe is listed as both a synth pop and baroque pop song, is a little over three and a half minutes in 4-4 time, B minor except for the very end, and 117 beats per minute. After the little bit of intro that's just instrumental, Chappelle gives us the first verse. It's fine. It's cool. This is then followed by the first pre-chorus. I don't wanna call it off, but you don't wanna call it love. And then the first chorus. <laughs> We then get the second verse. It's a sexually explicit kind of love affair, and I cry. Second pre chorus. I just love someone who calls me baby. And then, of course, second chorus. We then get a bridge. You wake up next to him in the middle of the night with a third chorus. Before finally getting to the outro, which really is just repeating the last line of the chorus. And that ultimately ends the song. The Synth. One of the first noticeable melodies we actually hear in the song, coming in even before the lyrics themselves, kind of spanning that D below the staff to the D on the staff octave, and it works very nicely with just the repeated eighth notes that the chords are doing behind it. Keyboard. Speaking of the chords, they are predominantly played by the keyboard, opening up with this weird sort of B minor 7, given without the 5th, and it's over A. It makes a bit more sense when you look at all the instruments together. Moving on to an A major chord, and then a D major over F sharp for two bars. much does that for the entire song, except for the pre-chorus and the bridge, where it does this G major 7, that quick hit on the G major, before going back to E minor 7 over G, which it repeats. Bass. The bass kind of plays sporadically during the verses, very spaced out and very large leaps, but for the most part it is just going G, A, D, B.
By comparison, during both the pre-course and the bridge, it really just stays on that E. Still quite spaced out though, and there's that one E at the end that's an octave lower. During the chorus, though, you get the idea of what it's harmonically doing. Now you really clearly have the G, A, D, B. Guitar. The guitar really only actually plays during the chorus and of course during the outro, and it really actually lays forth what the basic harmony of the entire song is, going G major, A major, D major, B minor. And yes, that does make it a four chord song for those that know. Strings. Probably the most dynamic instruments in these songs, given it's mostly played by just a synth with a string patch, it opens up during the chorus, during these back and forths between F sharp and A. In subsequent phrases, it actually starts to add a second string line over top of that, doing a C sharp and D. Once that additional string line is added, it goes back and forth between doing C sharp and D, and D and C sharp, given there's that one B in the second bar. At the very end, though, it then goes higher, doing an F sharp and D. Once the strings come in after the chorus, they kind of just continue throughout the rest of the song. Here, as in the second verse, it has these lovely two harmonies in the first two bars on those two string lines that very much complement Chappelle's lyrics. And then you actually see this division between the lines in the following two bars. That top line just going A to B, and that bottom one kind of reiterating that D for a bar, and then a C sharp to B line following that. Even in the following pre-chorus, they have a couple of more interesting things as well. That upper line holding on to that D, dropping to the B, going back up to the D, and then having that run at the very end. The lower line starting off on that A, dropping to the F sharp, and holding that E for quite some time. Basically repeating that same movement, except it ends on D this time and works its way up to E at the last bar. Oddly enough, it does have a slightly different line during the bridge, despite the bridge kind of just harmonically being an expansion of the pre-chorus. Now we have this very high line, that F sharp down to E, up the way to the G, before getting back to the F sharp, which it repeats the whole thing. At the end of the bridge, the strings do this movement. Those dashes basically mean you play each thing twice. You subdivide it once. So really, this could be written out as all sixteenths. Regardless, starting off just going back and forth between G and A on top of the staff, but it works its way even higher at the end, finally ending on that high D above the staff. This last part is unique because it's during the slowdown of the song at the very end, and that slowdown actually lowers the pitch as well. You see up top that retard as it slows more gradually and gradually down, and then you can see it actually lowers by a semitone. Now in B minor, we move to B flat minor. Ultimately, we end on a G flat major 7 chord at the very end. For the most part, each phrase kind of opens similarly. These very spaced out eighth note ties over the bar, that D to B, and then that D to C sharp. You'll notice it gets a bit more interesting on the second half, we have these lovely offbeat melismas, but we still don't ever get higher than that F sharp. In fact, we go lower to that low A. It's fine, it's cool, you can say that we are nothing but you know. The second phrase of the first verse essentially repeats that same idea, the only difference being is you now have that half note on the end on roof on that low B. And guess I'm the fool with their arms on like an angel through the car Similarly speaking, the first phrase of the second verse pretty much starts out the same way as the first phrase of the first verse. Again, just changed words. On the back 
half of the second verse, though, things start to change. You'll notice that the initial changes are subtle. It's just the opening lines are now on beat as opposed to off beat. And again, work very well with the strings. But on the back half of this phrase specifically, she jumps much higher in her range, all the way up to that A, very syncopated. And we have this lovely melisma at the end where she has a fall off. And I cry. Pre-chorus. Unlike the verses, which primarily focus around eighth notes, the pre-chorus mostly focuses around sixteenth notes. You'll know each subphrase starts off with a group of sixteenth notes. On the back half of each pre-chorus, though, there's this lovely rhythmic play going from sixteenths to eighths to quarters when she finally gets to I Call Baby. I don't wanna call it all. The second chorus is pretty much the same, minus some changed words, but there's an additional line over top of it, going from A to G to F sharp. Chorus. Moving on to the chorus, we always start off each subphrase with the swoop up to that high F sharp. You'll also notice that while it still kind of sticks to the main eighth note and quarter notes that we got in the verses, we are significantly higher in her range, getting all the way to the F sharp on top of the staff. <laughs> The second phrase of the chorus is both rhythmically and melodically identical to the first, there are just changed words. It's on the back half of the chorus, though, that things get interesting. We do have her still high in her range, and good luck, babe, it's very spaced out, but you'll notice that back half of the phrase is actually pretty similar to the back halves of the initial phrases we talked about. The big thing here, though, is that there's an additional line over top repeating the well, good luck lines. <laughs> That's essentially all that happens in the chorus until we get to the final one. I included the end of the actual bridge in this because it ties itself so well into the actual last chorus. You can see how long she actually holds that high D. She actually even repeats that high held D again while the ad libs continue. Given it's slightly altered and there's that break in the middle, but it still complements it and brings the song much to a climax. <laughs> As we transition to the back half, though, her ad-libs do just kind of go into the supporting well good luck lines. It's a new melody in addition to the ones that were heard before, but that's all we're doing here. Even once the line repeats, the well good lucks are still there given they're slightly different in the ad-libs. <laughs> Bridge. Oddly enough, the first phrase of the bridge doesn't actually have any lyrics. We have that holdover from the chorus, which is that high D you see there, and then we have Chappelle underneath just kind of ad-libbing in that E to A range. <laughs> we actually get into the lyrics of the bridge, you can see she still very much is holding that E to A range, we sometimes hit that D on the end of the melisma at the end, and still very much focused it on eighth notes given we have a couple of sixteenth syncopations in there as well. As we continue through the bridge, that E to A range pretty much holds again, except for the occasional D at the end of melismas, but you'll notice that, especially in the back half, she starts becoming more spaced out and very much increases the syncopation. As we wrap up the bridge, you'll notice her range does increase a little bit. We hit that F sharp at that one time, and we hit that B at the very end. Notice how she's very much focusing on the syncopation now. We actually get it pretty much every bar. Note that I did drop off the last bar of this, though, because I did talk about it when we were doing the chorus. I hate to say, I told you so, you know I hate to say, but Outro. The outro is essentially just Chappelle repeating the last word of the chorus. You'd have to stop the world just to stop the feeling. The big thing here, though, is that we start to get the slowdown at the very end. As I said before, the slowdown actually starts to lower the pitch as well. <laughs> When 
we get to the very end of the song, obviously we've now had a key change, as I said before. We moved from B minor to B flat minor. And notice that Chappelle now still repeats the you'd have to stop the world line, but she's an octave lower and she's singing much more softly. I do see how Chappelle Roan got so popular so quickly as more and more people got exposed to her music. It's unique, it's catchy, it's impactful, and it's emotional, this song very much included. Speaking on that emotional content too, a lot of people tend to enjoy the music and don't actually look into the lyrics to see what the song is about, leading some people to dance and having a good time, to some people very much emotionally connecting with her music. Speaking on that same thing, I do hope everyone here listening, if you're looking for somebody to love, I all hope that you do someday find somebody that you can You know, it's funny, when I first started covering her music, I had actually only read her name and I actually didn't know how to pronounce it. I initially pronounced it Chapel Roan as opposed to Chappelle Roan. I actually had a video on this channel where I made that mistake and actually had to go back after it was all recorded and do a retake of just saying her name. Let's see if y'all can figure out which video I did that in. Wait, wait, wait. 